Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk, where Team Ace pick up their first win of the group stage, ending the record one and five. It happened. How did it, it happen, it. Raz? Ah, uh, look, finally, no, I was just about to make the most cringe thing. I was about to say they took notes. Okay, I said it all, oh, but I'm sorry. My you bad. had a chance to go back on it, and you committed. Look, the moment, I can't be the guy that hides the bad humor from people. I have to just rip it. Um, but no, like, I, I felt like we said it in the last game. The early game was much better. Um, this time around, it felt like the opposite. <laughs> they were getting ripped to pieces and then had that great team fight near the end of the game where it turned into a bear. And I think we finally saw what they just, you know, done domestically and what they were working towards. This is a fast-paced group, but when they get to the late stages, the team fight execution was there. And they were, you know, as much as this game won't mean anything in terms of standings, it doesn't change the outcome. It is such a big deal for them to not go 0-6 and find that win. And I do think over the course of the six games that we have seen from Team Ace, the notes that they have taken have shown and they have developed somewhat. I do think it is also fair to call out and address that Detonation Focus Me have not had the most focused playstyle. We've had some very chaotic games from them, and this time round, it was punished by the LLA. Looks like they had an ace up their sleeves. Okay, let's keep <laughs> letting them rip. <laughs> I, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I, I, Team Ace's composition actually played quite well kiting back from Steel, and I think that's something worth uh, noting for the rest of the tournament. Let's go! Oh, he's so happy. Ah, yes! Oh, that's so that brings great to see. so much joy to my heart. He managed to pick that win up. My word, look at that damage graph. That is phenomenal. I love the gold. Just at the end, managed to pull it back to the point with Aaron Favor, and it was such a battle. Yeah, and I mean, it came down to the team fight comp that they had. They just needed to kite back with uh, the Galio and Ezreal and uh, Graves, I thought. Specifically, Dimitri played quite well in a lot of those fights, and it turned into Baron. I mean, even the sneak Baron that we saw was fun. Uh, this team was playing with fire with the goal of at least taking one, as he saw in his player cam. Just that one game, they ended up doing. They did indeed. Dimitri's opposite number, of course. Steel had a very good tournament. I think we've spoken about him you know, uh, probably more than many of the other players outside yes. of maybe Utapon. But I think for Detonation Focus, me, it is obviously time to say goodbye to them. They finished their group stage so close to making it through to Rumble. For the LJL, they were in MSI groups last year. They were in Worlds groups off the plans. And now for MSI groups, we're still seeing them be strong, but we're not seeing that consistent ability to make it to groups multiple events in a row. Exactly. I mean, it's one of those things where they are ranking up. I know that last split was a really big turning point and now they're coming in with newer talent and all that. So change always hurts because you have to integrate well. That's why <laughs> I, I, I love them with the camera. Uh, that's why I'm hoping that they keep firm with this current lineup going into Worlds because this is one that will only get better. And I think the expectations was uh, this team was going to struggle a bit with the roster changes, but yeah. you know, as much as the scoreline at the end is going to be that 1-5, I think this tournament, they definitely had games where, you know, they did match up well to T1 at points in their game. They did challenge uh, the cycle on the floor. That game they had today was just absolutely humongous. Final yeah. thoughts, Rez? Context is what matters. People will look at the scoreline by the end of the tournament, and that does not speak to what actually happened in these games. 100% agreed. I think in particular, Detonation Focus, me, also a team that developed over the course of their six games. But before our final game of the group stage, you can see we have the chance to talk to SGB Taki after their win over Detonation Focus, me, in our Verizon post-match interview. I'm now joined by Taki. Hi, Taki. Massive congratulations. You guys made it out of your groups. What does it mean to you to be able to represent your region now here in the Rumble stage? Thì đầu tiên là chúc mừng mình với chiến thắng vô cực kỳ tuyệt vời vừa rồi ha. Thì bạn cảm giác như thế nào khi mà được đại diện cho khu vực VCS tại vòng hỗn chiến sắp tới? Dạ, em thấy rất là vui và sung sướng vì mình được đại diện cho VCS đi MSI và còn tiến sâu vào vòng hỗn chiến sắp tới. So I am basically on cloud nine to represent the VCS at this MSI and also take the VCS to the Rumble stage. Yeah, it's great to see you guys be able to make it this far. Um, I want to talk about the game because that was one of the most exciting games we had so far at MSI. There were a lot of team fights. You were involved in a lot of them as well. Was that the strategy for you guys going into it to like fight as much as you possibly could? 
thì uh, bây giờ mình nói một chút về trận đấu ha thì uh, đó là một trận đấu cực kỳ kịch tính kịch tính nhất từ giải đấu từ trước tới giờ ha thì có phải là chiến thuật của team mình là đánh nhau càng nhiều càng tốt không và đặc biệt là bạn là một người là đã mở giao tranh rất là nhiều cho team mình giờ vì tính chất của đội hình nên bọn em cần phải đẩy nhanh nhịp độ trận đấu và ép giao tranh liên tục để có thể lấy lợi thế cho team mình và sự nó đối thủ đó là lý do mà em luôn tìm cách mở giao tranh và tìm cơ hội giao tranh với team địch. So it's because of our team composition that we have always to engage going in to find advantage for our team. So that's why I always try to make plays in order to find the advantage for my team. And speaking of your team composition, you guys, I know, have run the Callista before, even with the Kaiser. Uh, why did you decide to bring out that Callista mid pick today? Thì uh, lý do tại sao mà mình lại đưa ra cái lựa chọn coi như là Callista đi đường giữa trong ngày hôm nay? Giờ yeah, Callista đi uh, top hay là mid thì hiện giờ đang khá là hốt vì giờ sai hay đánh đanh hay cầm nên bọn em đã học hỏi và luyện tập nó thử đó là lý do mà trong trận đấu hôm nay bọn em cho Kalista đi đường giữa. So um, Kalista on top lane or mid lane or is a hot pick right now and we actually learned it from the shy so we have practiced it run it very uh, quite well so we decided to bring it into this matchup. And lastly, there's a lot of good teams in the Rumble stage waiting for you right now. Uh, do you have a message for those teams you haven't played against yet? Thì uh, có rất là nhiều team mạnh đang đợi bạn tại uh, team bạn tại vòng hỗn chiến thì bạn có bất kỳ cái lời nào để nhắn nhủ tới các tất cả các đối thủ của bạn trong vòng hỗn chiến sắp tới hay không? Uh, em muốn nhắn nhủ với những đối thủ trong trận chiến sắp tới là Bài Châu đang đánh. So I want to tell all our opponents in the Rumble stage that the Buffalo is coming. Watch out for us. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Taki, for joining me. And we'll see you back here in the next stage. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes, the Buffalo is coming. The Buffalo is coming with Mark Ruffalo on the back. Let's go, boys. Before we get into this final pre-match of the group stage, I do need to take a moment just to celebrate the VCS once more. Not only are they back on the international stage for the first time in two, two and a half years, this isn't even the first seed from their region that has qualified through to the Rumble stage. And I think crucially, the thing that I truly appreciate about the Saigon Buffaloes is they are playing their style no matter who the hell is standing in front of them. And I think throughout the course of this group stage, I've thoroughly enjoyed watching their games. I've also yelled at them and wished they had a little bit more patience and control, but they do have these magical moments that have allowed them to qualify for Rumble and maybe a thorn in the side of their other opponents. And I think this is such a young team, the aggression they've consistently brought out, was talked about in the interview, something they brought up against T1's bot lane, yes. most respected T uh, bot lane in the world. I just absolutely delivered. It's insane. And look, take a look at this team fight. This brought them right back into the game. Uh, Bean Jay's excellent. This isn't the first time he did this too in this game. Uh, ultimate as the, as the Diana pick. All of these members aren't afraid to take game winning clutch fights like these. Uh, this happened in one game, but it happened, as you mentioned, versus T1 before. And I love the fact he talked about the Callista <laughs> pick. Chillin! and relaxing. <laughs> no stress. I love they talk about the Callista pick being inspired by the Shy. It is dangerous to take teachings from the Shy, but this is a dangerous team who will go aggressive. It's just short average game time in the region, and they, they really reflect it in their play. Absolutely <laughs> love the play camps. I just can't take my eyes off of them. I did say a little bit earlier that I'm very excited to see what the Buffalo is going to bring into this matchup against T1 because the very first time they did play against one another, that bot lane duo led by uh, Shogun maybe had a huge, huge, huge impact jumping into Game UC uh, as well as Carrier, picking up multiple kills. The Tristana at one point was at 5-2, and two, yeah. had a crack and slay and rapid fire counter by 11 minutes. Had there been a little bit more control, a little bit more macro, a little bit more tempered aggression, yes. it could have gone differently. That's why I'm looking forward to one, this game the most because, yes, if they, if they looking back at it, with how strong their bot lane was, the one feedback I gave was that, hey, I want them to be moving around the map a little bit more, right? Yeah. Rift Herald was for you to take as a team with how strong of a bot lane you had. And they just kept going, but then of course you could open up the game a little bit more. And I love, this is such a volatile lane matchup because if you don't find the all in windows with an Alistair, you will just get poked out, chunked out, and will never find an opportunity. But this is just exactly the style they've been playing, finding these windows in and these constant double kills. And we sing the praises of Shogun a lot, Today has been a great day for Taki, and in this specific game, Taki 
was just playing really well. So the bot lane as a duo has been really showing up. I think in particular, one of the things that I found very interesting about this early laning phase was the discussion we had backstage with all of the analysts talking about how, yes, at the end of the day, Buffaloes were picking up the kills, but it was not setting up the lanes correctly. It was not in a world or in a way that would punish and keep Community and T1 further behind because the CS was still in the advantage, gold, experience, etc. And I think ultimately, Ona did a fantastic job this game of targeting mid. Uh, we saw just such a rough time for Saigon Buffaloes when mid kept bleeding in that one. And I feel like this has been a consistent for T1 where they have targeted mid throughout this group stage. Yeah, really the case. I want to take a, uh, take a moment just to look at some of these statistics here. Gold difference at 14, yeah. Saigon Buffalo plus 2.9k. Yeah, keep the head down there, Orcs. Yeah. Uh, but T1 5k, uh, Herald percentage, of course, 80%, 70%. First tower, 100% for Saigon Buffaloes. First dragon, 100%. I mean, great early game strengths. And this is why, <laughs> specifically the Herald. <laughs> oh, no. First right here in Herald percentage. If yeah, I'm just saying, I know the camera decided to move away from me the moment I did this. Guys, I'm a little offended. Thank you. All right. Go again, this go again. right here, the Herald percentage for T1, I want to be seeing taken real seriously because... I would say the best performer of the group of the bot lane has been uh, Shogun and Taki. So if they get another advantage like this again, really attack the Rift Herald and make it so, hey, if T1 want to fight for it, you're fighting for it too. What are the chances that we're going to see even more aggression out of the Buffaloes because there's no holds bars, there's seeding doesn't matter here. This, <laughs> this is like a free game. There's literally no pressure, no risks. I'm not sure you can get more aggressive than the Buffaloes. Good they point. have really been pushing it. I mean, day one, right? We haven't seen this region in such a long time and they come in into T1's bot lane, instantly start the fight. Very last thought, Jerez. Look. You have the advantages early. Let's start diving bot lane. That's what I want. Let's see if they can. Uh, by the way, Medi Vedi, just as an aside, Taki is the Afrikaans word for sneakers from South Africa. Ooh. So a quick shot. Is it specifically the word for sneakers from South Africa? Or is it just Afrikaans Why is from South Africa? What? I said quick shot. Oh. <laughs> well, then you're asking Do you know any cool like words in Welsh? The, I mean, I, actually, I know one great word in Welsh. I actually think the word for this in Welsh is so much better than the English word. You ready? I don't. Taxi. Taxi? Taxi, yeah. Yeah. You know what it means? I'm aware yeah, of it. It means taxi, it means, guys. Yeah. Welsh <laughs> is such an inventive language. Do you, do you want to know, know the Welsh word for bus? Yes. Boos. Boos <laughs> magic. <laughs> and it's crazy because it's B-W, but the W has a little roof over it. Oh, a little roof for so, the W because the bus takes you to your house. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then do you want to know ambulance? Yeah. Ambulance. Oh, <laughs> the only moves there. Yeah. <laughs> the other one I like, isn't there like poppity pop or something? It's like popcorn no, or something? No, that's fake. Is the that actually fake? ping. Poppity it's ping? not the word for microwave. That's <laughs> such a good one, though. <laughs> anyway, final game of the group stage. Saigon Buffalo and T1 are already through to Rumble. Seeding doesn't really matter out of the group if your first or second doesn't change anything in the Rumble stage. So this is purely a battle for Saigon Buffalo to see if they can be the first team in 2022 to take a series, albeit a best of one series, of T1. Yeah, T1, of course, have dropped games during the regular season. Um, Haven't dropped a series, though. They have not dropped a series. Exactly that. Now, I would be surprised if T1 lost the game here. I think it would set up the Saigon Buffaloes very nicely moving into the next stage because RNG 6-0, brackets 9-0, G2 8-0, like, the expectation is that T1 clean sweep their group as well, and then the the three favorites for the tournament mm -hmm. move on undefeated. But for Saigon Buffalo to potentially usurp that, let's see if they can do it. So, the bands have come through. The Twisted Fate priority for Froggy has been locked in, and immediately Faker will respond with a Silas. What's interesting is the last time they met, it was Faker on TF, and it was Froggy with the Silas, and now they will roll reverse. And Froggy did not have a good time in that game. I believe he ended 0-7-3 on the Silas. He was very much focused by T1. It's the matchup, bro. Well, yeah, it's the matchup. Well, you know? we'll see if it's the matchup <laughs> this game, won't we? Uh, Faker perhaps watching a little bit of Cactus Silas the last couple of days. There's the Wukong as so well. So now we'll see a, a Vi, right? From yeah. Saigon Buffalo. Vi That's what's Gwen, supposed to happen now. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're actually just swapping drafts from Game one of day one of From MSI. Game one of day one, yes. That's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? Uh, game one of day looks one. Looks like, okay, we're gonna shift away from the last draft and it will be a Viego locked in for BJ. He has had one Viego performance so far at this tournament. Ooh, the Akali hover would be nope. risky. Well, the hover isn't that risky. Locking it in is the risky part. Yes, true. 
Um, is that the immediate note? It hasn't quite oh, been locked in I'm just yet. Been... Oh, yeah, you're oh, right. Okay, so, yeah, I was going to say, so the problem with blind picking your top laner against Zeus is he plays a lot of counter champions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and Jax is definitely one of them. So it's a very top-sided draft from both sides right now. The bot lane, the last time we saw them play was very volatile. Shogun and Taki was, were rather hyper aggressive, finding 2v2 kills pretty consistently. But at the end of that game, it was Gumi Yushi that found himself with 10 kills on the Lucian. So with Lucian gone, with Tristana gone, I'm curious as to what direction both of these bot laners will go. Maybe some Samira. Maybe we'll see a mage bot lane. I'd be a little surprised actually if we saw a mage bot lane for Shogun. Yeah, with uh, double APs already on his team, it would make a uh, heavily magic damage team. T1 here, ban away the Nautilus and the Karma. Senna removed by Saigon Buffalo. Alongside that, perhaps, I'll look to get rid of, I mean, anything. Like, you don't need to get rid of the Nami because Lucian Nami is already banned away. You could get rid of something like the Leona or the Pike from Kevin. He's played that a couple of times already. So, Ezra, I was going to yeah. say, Ezra Yumi for Gumiyushi and Carrier. Nope, it's going to be Callista. Yeah. Let's go. Ooh, oh, I love, I love the Ash yes. response. I love that. That Ash is so good into the Callista. The movement speed slow is actually an attack speed slow because Callista obviously attacks every time she jumps around. And so if you can slow her move speed from your auto attacks as Ash, you can slow her ability to get damage down in a fight. Also gives Saigon Buffalo a few more options when it comes to finding picks. You already have the Twisted Fate, but a global Ash Arrow as well. Very nice follow-up. They could pick Lulu. That would help them find picks as well. <laughs> I hate that you come up with these. <laughs> Instead, okay, Brawl, they're going hyper-defensive. Yep. Very much on the counter-engage. Does make it harder for the Wukong to be able to find fights. Right now, T1 have an advantage on the side lane. They have both a Silas and they have the Jax to act as basically one through one threats. Oh, they're just hovering. Kerry is just flexing right now. Yep. He's just showcasing how well, deep his champion pool is. What you haven't realized yet is it's Silas' support. Uh, I have a friend that fre swears by it. Swears by it. It's Silas' support! Unless it's Rumble support. What support is it, Benny? Tell me! I mean, I'm pretty confident it's Rumble support. I don't Wukong see why, support? I don't Rumble see why jungle. you would move the Silas bot here when you're playing against a Twisted I mean, fate. that's true. It doesn't make any sense. But it just, I got very excited by the fact I said it, and then they picked something that yeah. isn't usually a support. Yeah, I know. So, I know Carrier has played a lot. I don't, I couldn't tell you if Rumble support uh, is somewhere in his history. I will check. I do not know. I I'm also, afraid. I will say, uh, Marcus, stats team, has Rumble support ever been played in the history of international competition? Uh, that's an unfair question. I don't know if they're going to be able to answer that one. I mean, okay, just like, when did we last, he has, he's never played Rumble. According, according to the database I'm using, he has never played Rumble in all of his games ever. So, in theory, professionally, we're getting a debut to carry his Rumble support. Okay, I'm in. Let's have a look and see how things play out. Rumble support for Carrier. I'm trying to get it up. Many tout him as the current best support in the world. He is continuing to showcase a wide array of different champions in that role. He hasn't played any Leona, no Nautilus. Okay. He's played only Pike, Nami, Wukong, and Bard. So here we go, Betty. LCK Spring, Spring 2020 was Rumble support everywhere. Apparently. Oh, really? Nine games. The only games in major regions of Rumble support was LCK Spring and Summer, two games, 2020, apparently. Um, Did yeah. Carrier play any of them? No, Kerry has never played this champ. Lehens has played it a couple of times. See, Life. now that makes sense to me. Lehens, that doesn't surprise me. He also is running Ghost and Cleanse, Vedius. And I will say, I play a lot of solo queue in EU West. My finger would be right-clicking <laughs> reporting oh, right now. I'd be like, guys, is this the new Ghost Nunu? Oh, What's no, happening here? No, 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 no. Guys, don't play solo queue today. Just take a break. <laughs> Just take a break. But there were challenges to complete. Just, Maybe that's what he's doing. Just take a break, everyone. You know, don't, you know, just watch games today, you know? Maybe, like, find a streamer that you like and just watch them play League of Legends instead. I don't, I think you should not log in today. Hasn't it? 
We'll be spotted by Ona. Forced away a little bit. He's fine. <laughs> but yes, I, I agree with you, Betty. He's running Ghost. Man, this is like the Nunu. Do you want to know another thing? Gumiyushi hasn't used his Black Spear. So he hasn't oh. propped like the oh. chuck someone in. So I'm wondering if he's going to keep that for Ona and use it on Ona. But don't you like lose half of your laning power if you yeah, don't? Yeah, because you don't get the proc from the. I'm pretty Sentinel. sure you can also. I haven't played. You can just use it in lane if you want to. I was gonna, no, but I'm oh, pretty you sure can you can it. also rebind yeah, you can, yeah. to someone else later on into the game. I believe you can buy it and then rebind. Uh, but uh, buy it for free. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit odd. I'm gonna be honest, but you know what we're gonna do, Betty? We're gonna have as much fun as T1 are having. Like if Kami is playing, cleanse, ghost, yeah. arcane comet, rumble support. That's the ride we're on. And it's a wacky one. one Death Dastardly is in the back. He sees him and Motley go. <laughs> Just want to remind people that this game has no consequences. Both teams have qualified for the next stage. Whether T1 go undefeated or not, it doesn't matter. The seeding literally has no impact. They both start 0 0 in the next stage, and uh, it, it won't give any advantage to anyone. So, yes, we are seeing something a little unorthodox, but. You know, it's carry it. Enjoy it. Yep. Froggy, really good trades. I told you, man, it's just the matchup. It's the it matchup. Is, apparently, it's just the matchup. Faker Utilizing hit. his E plus the goal card to bully out Faker. Good stuff already from uh, Froggy in this early laning phase. Okay, so we've already learned one thing. Rumble plus Callista gets, gets pushed. pushed. Yeah. Not that surprising against the Braum. Yeah. I can't think of many Braum lanes that actually get pushed. Uh, there probably are some out there. Braum Rumble, mate. Maybe. <laughs> you just haven't seen Maybe. it yet. Carrier, I'd love if... if the damage I don't know if the observers the can hit me, but if we get to click on the rumble, I'd love to know what skills he's taking. So he's definitely got E and W. Okay, so yeah, there's the W at the very least. Oh, thank you, observers. So yeah, you can see W with I, I literally e. told you what he took! Yeah, but I want to keep track of it. Oh, you want to see the you know leveling? I mean? I'd love okay, to know what okay, he does. Okay, because means... the thing is, if you take Q... You're pushing the wave. You're pushing the wave, yeah. and I don't think you want to do that. So maybe you just actually put more e points into E, Mm -hmm. I'm curious. I get you. He's that still managing his heat bar pretty well. Yeah, he is. You're right. Get that above half. Here he comes. Look, every time he needs more heat, he's going in for a bit of a harass. He's the level three. Is he going to? No, see? Ah, Two points in E. Another ah, point in E. Okay, cool. there yeah. we go. So uh -huh. he now he's mainly going to be playing for poke, I guess. Now, Ona looking for a bit of a play in mid. Froggy, he might have to flash this. Ona going forward. Stun card ready. Froggy will stun him up. Maybe looking for Ona to overchain. Oh, oh flash away. Wow, is it okay. a flash spectral more? I feel like. BJ didn't need to, but I, I don't I think, think it was more they were trying to, to turn it around away. and get the kill. He does have level four though. Yeah. And he knows with the push in top, he should be able to secure this one. There's no way they dive this right now. No, 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 no. Just getting a bit more poke off. That's to be expected. So I can see how Rumble would be super annoying to lane against. I mean, especially as Braum. I get like, I'm trying to work out how I would play into it. And as Rakan, I think I'd lose the lane. <laughs> but I, maybe you, you lose could... the lane on like every champ. Yes, you, well, I, I lose the lane on every champ, no matter what. Oh, here we go. Uh, Faker Good here trade. trying to win the lane in the mid lane. But I think maybe all in onto the rumble. But his base damage is really high, so yeah, you'd have to really dodge a couple high. of E's. But he's not running Q. Yeah, but even with the E's, his base. So you'd have to not take the poke and all in. I think something like a Leona or so Norlus just, could work. So your advice is just don't dodge get all of Kevy's abilities. Don't yeah. get hit and hit them. I mean, widely regarded as the best player in the world coming into this tournament, I think it's pretty easy to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> just don't get hit and hit. Just don't get dived, man. Froggy oh, here. Oh. Look at the damage. B and J coming in as well. Fake able to dodge away. Ona. For short on the spectral more there. B and J look for oh. a little bit more. It's just the matchup, Freddy. I'm telling you right now. If even if if I could solo kill Faker. That would just be it. I'd just be, I'd be good, you know. I have a friend who is silver, but he solo killed Poe once in a game. Like I think Poe was on like on Smurf okay, climbing to be or something. Fair, I've also killed Poe. Oh, I don't you? know if that. Caveat means ghosting in here. Dodge away. So you just dodge, man. You just dodge. Now Zeus is here as well. <laughs> this seems unfair. Froggy has flash. Good, good flash, flash away. Bj here with the chase as the well. Caveat taking the tower. Zeus, where are you gonna go? Down towards the Razor Beaks. Froggy with a good escape. He's out. He is oh, out. No, Lane's better no. go to him. No! BJ had smite, could have smited the Razor Beak to get the health. Instead, ah, he could read it. It was turned around. Well. Rumble yeah. supports OP. But how how annoying is Carrier though? Like mm -hmm. he tanked that tower. <laughs> it was the <laughs> ghost, man. The ghost got him into the lane quicker. Then he could tank the tower and run away. Uh, it's just I mean it's really smart from Carrier, yeah. but if you're the buffaloes in that situation, you're like, can you just let the towers hit this guy that's dived <laughs> in between two of them, please? Can you just, can you not? But no, Karius like, sorry, bro. 
First blood for me. He's got the sword boots now, so he does even more damage. I think he has he taken a point in Q yet? Oh uh, yeah, he used it in the last. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Took it at level four. After you get out of the lane, I guess you don't worry too much about pushing waves. Uh -oh, just looking at the uh -oh. gank's owner is here. Kemi turn back on the cleanse to get away from the brawn. Now they're turning on to Kumiyushi, who starts cleanse of his own, flashes away. Shogun trying to get the damage down, but the cleanse from Carrier. We joked around it. It is so big, Bray. It's <laughs> This guy's playing 5D dimensional chess I while mean, the rest uh, of us are playing Wild Rift, Betty. Why? I, I don't even know why I dared doubt Carrier. I mean, I don't know if I doubted him. I just feared for what he's doing to solo queue. Faker should be able to just E over the wall. Nicely done. Yeah, so Carrier isn't fair, you know? Mm -hmm. But how, like, unbalanced are junglers, you know? Like, it's, it may, truly Imba. That's, just, a, that's the thing we haven't used much recently. Imba. Imba? That's because we're not. You know, but it was a big 1990s thing. The 1990s anymore. Well, it was a huge. Even when I joined LEC, right, all the pros would be like, "Man, this this pixel so Imba." No, they so weren't. Imba. No, they didn't say that. Maybe, maybe the pros just weren't maybe, talking to you. Maybe that Trevor much. said that. Oh, actually, yeah, you Trevor know, was quite old. when he was 16, maybe. I just. I think Imba was a thing, man. I mean, yeah. Again, when Trevor was 16, it's like a hundred years ago. You know, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm only like two years younger than that. <laughs> maybe that's my age group, mate. <laughs> Wait, you've been lying to me? <laughs> Sorry. Probably confusing me with Endo again. Okay, he's just, you know, just finished high school, okay? <laughs> Hasmid here, not in the best of shapes. Jungle. So Imbo once again. Zeus trying to get the counter strike down. We'll get the stun. Owner with the chase. Foggy coming in with the destiny. They're looking for the damage on Zeus. They'll get one. Need to work. Healing up Hasmid as well. Owner trying to put the damage down, but Hasmid still just taken out in the end. Owner, you got to dodge away from this one. you got to dip, dodge, dive. Oh, duck. the sweeper. He can't sweeper. see him. He can't see him. Oh, he oh, he's John Cena, you can't see me! <laughs> Ona gets out, Foggy gets the stun off as Faker comes in for the chase. Can T1 players stop being really good? <laughs> like, <laughs> they just outplay everything, man! Oh my god, the sweeper was so smart from Ona. He's able to just swag his way out of that one. Four kills for T1. That's true Alcove Gaming. That was truly blessed Alcove Gaming. Very impressive stuff. And they end up walking away one for one there. Wow. The Buffaloes, the last time they played up against T1, it was all about that bot lane aggression. But Ona has been everywhere on the map right now. We can have a look at this. Bit of an all-in from Hasbeth. The trade initially looks very good. And then the stun card comes through, and they have enough damage to get that kill. Now, keep track of what Ona does here. So, Froggy doesn't have enough consistent DPS to be able to turn this one around initially. He gets a little bit of health back, so he pops the pot. And then the Sweeper denies vision, so you just he can't see him. He doesn't know where he's going. Yeah. And the control ward in the bush as well means that Ona knows exactly where Froggy is. Great flash as well, because if he flashed towards the upper bush, he would have been hit by the edge of the wild cards, I believe. Really well played there by T1. And as you say, just a cut above right now. Saigon Buffalo, of course, still in the rumble stage. They have qualified. He was a cheeky monkey, you could say. Ooh, ah, ah. I'm sorry, I just... I, I heard the voice of Kadril. <laughs> 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 uh, Carrier hovering around mid now. Ghost cleanse, up and available. Froggy, you can't stun him. Well, you can stun him. But you can't. But you... Don't give Shoot. me all that technicality crap that you always give me. <laughs> 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 I was not expecting you to use that word, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm just no. a bit more PG-13 than that one, Betty. I thought of another word and I had to like... Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> just quick pivot. Yeah. But yes, um, yes, you can't stun him. He can get away. He continues to roam around. Level 6 now has the equalizer. In. Saigon Buffalo, you know, you're 2,000 gold in the hole. You haven't played poorly. Like, they made a, a few good practice plays. The fight top side where Hazmid uh, had the reaction from Froggy, almost got the two for one exchange there. Bot side, they put the pressure on as well, but Ono was there in time. And it's just T1 playing the map a little bit better right now. T1 being very good at League of Legends. Yeah. So what are the options now? Keep my eyes on Carrier once again, roaming up towards the top side of the map. The thing is with the early tier two boots as well, you're, you're just so much more mobile. Mm -hmm. You have so much damage. I I could see this pick falling off, right? Because obviously it doesn't, it does not um, offer much peel the later into the game you go. I mean, it depends what he goes, right? Because if you go like Rylai's and you just ult the enemy team at a, at a fight. Yeah, but it's one of those things where like, yes, in a sense, it's not the like owner offer, peel. It's or not a Braum, is yeah, it? You know it. what I mean? So, like, yeah, relatively speaking, he's going to offer less than a Braum will in terms of his ability to protect his AD carry. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I would argue that Saigon, 
They have not the best front to back comp. Sure. I mean, it, it like it, yeah, it, it's one of those things where when you look at what the Buffaloes have drafted, they've gone for like a bit of a side lane, one three one, try and attack, look for picks. But T1 have kind of matched it with the with the Jax and with the Silas. And then the great thing about Silas is you can also steal Twisted Fate's ultimate to be able to do the same thing. So I think that like T1 have a lot more options in draft, and also that their, their team fighting is just stronger because they have Wukong Rumble. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of on the Buffaloes to find some way to find a good fight. Yeah, Ray, look ultimate. at how far away he was when he put that down. The arrow is going to connect. Boggy with a Sun card as well, but even though Ona is CC'd for a year and a half, about the same time as a normal Morgana binding, he's able to get away. Cyclone's back in. Gumiyushi here for the chase. Shogun has to jump away. Ona going back in with the Cyclone once again. Thank you underneath the tower, diving in. Stunned with the concussive blows. Will flash and escape. Boggy, the only one to fall. And Gumiyushi does find a kill, but important to note, it was Gumiyushi that threw in Ona. Your suspicions were correct. He has bound with the Wukong. And now he's provided Ona with another way of getting in and out of fights. Buffaloes, though, they've lost all their flashes. I don't think you should go for that! Yeah, Bean's dead. Ona escapes. Good use of the W there. Decoys out. Gumiyushi flashes Ooh, forward. Good Unbreakable from Taiki. Stops the projectile from coming through. And Shogun is able to survive to fight another day. Hazmat coming across as well, wondering perhaps if Ona was going to steal away the blue. Destiny popped. Taiki stepping forward here. Boggy spotted as he comes in. Ona tries to get the kill. He knows he's dead. Shut down in the end. All that gold goes over to Hazmat. Wow. Taiki with a very good shield to protect his AD carry, get him to safety. And as well, forced to use the flash there. I keep thinking that no one has flash and then someone else shows up. And then the flash immediately gets burned. Froggy still has a flash available to him. Let's have a look at this. Starts off with the ultimate coming out from Carrier. Really good landing. They force the disengage from great wall as well from Taiki. He actually stopped the Glacial Fisher coming out from Faker. And the then the stun off. comes through from Foggy as well. Ona gets locked up, and then he sees an opportunity on the Shogun. The ward next to the entrance allows him and Gumiyushi. Then the double flash comes through from Shogun and Bean. And then here you can see Faker in a little bit of trouble. And then Gumiyushi, very nice to done, gets that last auto hit in. Just a very well played fight. Now the Stolen clash. Destiny Faker. into the arrow, looking for the concussive blows here. Faker stepping forward, Taiki trying to body block, equalizer goes down. Shogun will get the stun, but the chase is on. Shogun has nowhere to go. Gumiyushi with his second of the game. And T1 are just in full control right now. From start to finish, they've played a very clean game. Only a six, well, two deaths rather. The Hasman trying to get something back on the top side of the map. Yeah, Zayas in a pretty good position here, but with BJ coming up, Heartbreaker used Zayas splashes away. Dodges away from the Spectral oh, no, as well. Oh, no. Get the stun counter strike. He just he smacks him with a lamppost. What would it happen if you gave T1 a real weapon, Venus? Zayas just gets the outplay. Two versus one. He plays that perfectly. Great utilization of the flash to create space between him and Hazmed. And then when he gets the isolated 1v1, he pops the E, and there's no way for BJ to do any damage. Now Carrier makes his way back to mid. Foggy trying to get away from this bone plating is propped. Foggy flashes underneath the tower, will survive. Carrier's ultimate about a third of its way before it comes off cooldown. And now there are no flashes on the rift. Another fight is going to result in someone's death, and this should be a tower going down in favor of T1. Yeah, I mean, T1 uh, 7,000 gold ahead at uh, 15 minutes. I think, uh, gold I think I know who's going to die in the next fight, Betty, and I don't think it's going to be people from T1. They're looking to match the other top contenders from the other groups. They're looking to go undefeated, continue their streak, and it only sets up for a very exciting matchup in the future. You know, T1 has their eyes on G2 and RNG. Right now, the three favorites for the tournament. Many would tout T1 as the favorite for the entire thing. But based on the first stage performance, you know that there will be some contenders this year's turn. And I will we wouldn't say, have it any other way. Oh, right? 100%. MSI, when we think of this one, RNG, former champions, mm -hmm. T1, former champions. Let's have a look back at this. So Zeus, the important thing to note here is the flash, creating space between him and Hazmed. And then he used his E to get this isolated 1v1. And then he slaps it with the lamppost, and then he's like, yeah, I'm going to win this. Very well played. Not really much of a reaction from Zayas. It's just another day in the office for him. Yeah, I just uh, I wanted to remind you, Counter-Strike active. Jax enters evasion for two seconds, a defensive right. stance that causes him to dodge all incoming non-turret base attacks. Right. And take 25% reduced damage from all area effectability sourced from champions. 
Works pretty well into a Viego and a Gwen who want to use their auto attacks as the equalizer goes down in the mid lane. Gumi Yushi cleanses away the Enchanted Crystal Hour stun. And uh, I told you during the next fight, I didn't think it would be T1 that died, and it wasn't. It was Shogun once again. You know, I'm not going to get this reference, but I'm hoping some people in the chat will. Is it anime? Zeus was likely trained by Piccolo. It's a Dragon Ball Z reference. That is a Dragon Ball Z reference. Or, but it's an abridged reference, that's the thing. Or an orchestral one. I was trained in the clarinet. He was trained in the Piccolo. <laughs> what his musical taste has to do with his League of Legends skill, I'm not sure, Medius. <laughs> I'm sure he can toot that flute really well. See, people think that many Betty get on really well. But in fact, there is <laughs> deep-rooted hatred that is shared between the two of us. That's how it works. And often, our casts come from trying to make the other one suffer. <laughs> and right now, <laughs> Medic is winning. Um, right, having a look at the state of the game. We're going to get tweets about that. <laughs> <laughs> do you want? They are in a very commanding position. 17 minutes in, they find themselves with 7,000 gold in the lead. And of course, we've had a little bit of fun with this game. T1 has had a little bit of fun with this game. The only people not having fun right now are the Buffaloes. I um, will say, I think they can have a little bit of fun because they know really they're in Rumble the stage. The actually, actually, <laughs> let me just push up my glasses here for a second, <laughs> Benius. I think they can have a little bit of fun because they are in the Rumble stage. It's not like they're being eliminated. <laughs> That's true. I can't do accents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree. Saigon Buffalo really struggling. Destiny coming in from Foggy. Dunched away from the spear there by Guma Yushi. Double TP used. Fates call. Ona onto the backline. Shogun having to flash away, but Ona's there for the chase. Equalizer down as well. Ona able to get the kill on the backline. It's actually Guma Yushi who goes on a rampage. Faker gets another hazmat now in the midst of four members of T1 trying to do what he can. They will get one. Faker dives forward once again. Bean steals away the, um uh, the rumble. Can you play it as well as carry up? decides against going any further. Of course, Rumble, very good when he has his ultimate, not quite as effective when he doesn't. Ends up being a two for three in favor of T1. They extend the gold lead to just short of 8K. There's no objective for them to get off the back of it. So T1 just gonna go back, catch these waves in a side. Faker bot, Zeus up towards the top. The Herald is still up. You'd think at this point, with this kind of gold lead, that the Baron would be available, but it is not. And the Buffaloes, they just try to look for a pick in mid. Their composition oh. very good at being able to find picks. You can see the chain CC coming through, but Gumiyushi completely mitigates that. Pulls Ona in, gives him the ability to then re-engage. And with Shogun gone, you can see it just becomes a brawl in the mid lane. Not the cleanest fight from T1 by any means, but uh, definitely a 1-1. One -one. I do win out in the end. I, I wonder, Betty. I'm debating with myself whether this makes T1 scarier or less scary when it comes to the Rumble Sage. Because well, they played Rumble support with Ghost Clef. I just think they just haven't shown anything. That's true. You know, I mean, I they've, they've shown this, but this is likely not an essential strategy against RNG or G2. As an analyst, the biggest takeaway would be T1 are professional ankle breakers. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, when they see an ankle, they get a sledgehammer and they just go thwack. As a know? doctor. Gives me more work to do. It does. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's so true. So, um, uh, yeah, it's it's. They played the map well, sure, but truth be told, a lot of their advantages advantages have just been coming from them styling on their opponents, <laughs> just playing better, you know, individually. Um, and of course, for the Buffaloes, that doesn't mean that it's all down and out. They mm. could just be playing the best team in the tournament. Yep. The other groups were easy. And they could still, yeah. you know, you only need to, to get final. top four, right? Yeah, you only need to get top four to get into the, the best of fives. Yep, into those playoffs. And so, for sure, it's uh, not all doom and gloom, and there will be more time for them to grow, evolve, adapt. But T1, improvise. I think that they okay. have not uh, shown their full power just yet, and I think we're just getting a taster of what this team is really capable of. Yeah, they won't even need their full power to take down that tower if held still entirely healthy after that initial charge. They're looking for another one as they push down towards the inhibitor tower and the inhibitor towards this bottom side. Rift Herald gets another charge in, the inhibitor will fall. Meanwhile, Hazmed is pushing in the top side. T1 will back away. Hazmed stays around, clears out the next wave. Mid lane wave, probably about 10 seconds away from hitting mid lane tower if T1 did want to push further. Instead, they will retreat. Recalls come out and they reset for an expected cloud drag. Ooh, here we go, pings onto the band. Yeah, just do it. Faker's going. Gwen is specialty, do they know? Destiny to force Faker away. Has made him Bean J have started this. We saw this literally in the last game. The same oh, but they oh. saw Braum walking up. That should give them an indication. 
they can I mean, it's, it's gone, Betty. It's down to like 4,000 HP. Oh, T1, they're ghosting. Kevin knows. Faker got behind them with the Destiny stolen away. Saigon and Buffalo looking for something. T1 looking for the play. Counter strike in by Zayas onto the back line. Faker diving in as well. One down already. Hasman has to jump out of the pit. They're still looking for the Baron. They can't get it. T1 bounce. The Baron secured four kills alongside it. And now T1 are looking to end the group stage undefeated. That they are, Medic. 17 to 4 is the kill score. And T1 wipe the Buffaloes off the map. I respect the play. I think that they just sent one too many people and they gave the play away. T1 was able to respond. Faker with the stolen. And Destiny finds the team, finds the fight, and T1 are going to find the game. 2022 has been the resurgence of T1. Still undefeated. No one has stood in their way. No one has matched them as T1 claim 6-0 group. Another dominant performance. We continue to see different flavors of this T1 team. But a great game from Zeus. Great game from Carrier. Owner doing a great job as like I mean everyone on T1 was great. Hey, and they all played really well. Faker nearly died. He True. did root, but he nearly did. <laughs> okay. He's gonna have to go back and work on that. Yep. But of course, jokes aside, very impressive performance from T1. Undefeated alongside G2 and RNG at the end of the group stage. We will be moving forward into the rumble stage later on this week. And it's going to set up for some hype games. We're going to get two games between RNG and T1, two games between G2 and T1, and then, of course, G2 and RNG. That is how Double Round Robin, in fact, works. I'm glad you understood that. For six years you've been casting now? Yep, six years. Yep. It's going to be exciting. It is, definitely. Of course, we have Someone's a small break. Someone's got to lose. That is true. Either G2 or T1 have to lose their undefeated streaks. It's going to happen in five days' time. Uh, 20th of May, I believe we kick everything off. So we've got a few days break during this week before we get into the Rumble stage and the top four teams there will get into our playoffs. I think a welcome break for some. Yeah. It'd be nice just to reset. It's been some long days <laughs> over the last yes, week or so. Some early starts as well Big for us. Big shout out to our production team oh, this huge. week. They have been working their asses off. It has uh, been some very long days. Yeah. And huge shout out to bringing a fantastic show. It's yeah. been really good to them. It really has. You think like we get in, say, 7 a.m. They're here at 5.30 just starting work every day. Leave after all of us as well. That concludes the group stage. But stay tuned for the MSI cooldown after the break. For more League of Legends conversation and analysis, you can also head over to Spotify to hear Travis and Emily share their MSI thoughts in the latest episode of Rift Reaction. Catch you later.